Let's have a look at the next example. So in this example, we're going to look at the cycloid. Now, what is a cycloid? Well, a curve traced out by a point on the edge of a rolling circle is called a cycloid. In this particular example, we're going to consider the circle rolling along a horizontal surface. So in that case, it's going to be rolling along the x-axis. We assume that the circle rolls without slipping or stopping, so it continually rolls. And this point on the circle is going to trace out a curve, and it's going to be this trail that's left in red here. So let's have a look at this in motion. So we've got our circle. We've identified a point on the circle in red. We're going to let our circle roll off to the right and see what the point, that red point traces out. So as the circle rolls, this red point is tracing out this red curve, and that's the curve we call the cycloid. We're interested in finding a parametrization of this curve. What is a function which describes how the x-coordinate and the y-coordinates change? And what is an appropriate use of a parameter in this case? So let's go ahead and do that. So how are we going to do that? Well, what we'll do is we'll sketch a slightly bigger diagram here. So I'm just going to put a circle down. So there's my circle. And let's draw some axes around it. So I'm going to imagine a snapshot of an instant where the circle has rolled just a little bit. So our point started here, and as the circle rolled just a little bit, maybe now that's where our point is. I want to come up with an expression for the x-coordinate. So the x-coordinate of that point would be this distance here, and the y-coordinate. That would be that height there. What is the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate, and how can they be described in terms of some parameter? Well, the parameter I'm going to use is just the angle through which the circle is already rolled. So how do I get that? Well, there's my center. I'll just drop a perpendicular line down connect the point on the circle with my center. How far has my, has my circle rolled? Well, when it started, this line connecting the red point to the center of the circle, that would have been vertical. That would have agreed with this vertical line I dropped down. But then as the circle rolled, it pulled away from it. So as it's rolling, this angle here tells me through what angle the circle has rolled already. That's what I'm going to use as my parameter. So let's figure out what else we need. Well, I know the circle has radius r. I can draw a little right triangle in here. That'll probably come in use. How far has it rolled? So what is this distance here? How far has it rolled? Well, as it rolls, every point along the arc of the circle, think of this as a tire now, every point along the arc of this tire would have come in contact with the ground. So the length along the ground in which it rolled is precisely the length of the arc subtended by this angle theta. So what's the length of the arc here? Well, it's a circle of radius r. The angle is theta, so that full arc would have length r theta. What is this distance here, I need to know that if I want to know x, because x is going to be r theta minus this distance here. That distance here is just the length of this leg of the right triangle. That's a right triangle with hypotenuse r, and the opposite angle to that leg is theta, so this is r sine theta. And maybe we'll probably need it in a bit. The other leg is r cos theta. So that's enough information now to figure out the x and y functions. So here's our parametrization. So I'm going to get rid of this rest of the axes that we don't need. What is x? x is, well, I should have carried that down, that length we worked out is r sine theta. So x is r theta 
minus r sine theta. So it's r theta minus r sine theta, or in other words, it's r times theta minus sine theta. What is y? y is this height here, which is this length here. What is that value? So that's y there. Well, it's the radius of the circle minus r cos theta. So it's r minus r cos theta. I can factor out the r, and I get r times 1 minus cos theta. And so there's our parameterization. What is theta allowed to range over? Well, we can, can run over any real number. And there's our parameterization for our cycloid.